Hello, welcome to the landing session on Indian economy. In this session, we will talk about healthcare in India. You will find the details in chapter 13 of the book uh, Dat and Sundaram's Indian Economy. Uh, health is an important aspect of any economy's uh, overall well being. Uh, healthy citizens are an asset of the country because for having a better skilled human capital, health uh, requires a serious attention. In this chapter, um, we'll talk about uh, health status of India's population. Um, we'll discuss a bit of uh, healthcare indicators and how India is performing in that. And there, uh, after that, we'll focus mostly on uh, or largely on public expenditure on healthcare in India, healthcare infrastructures, uh, how actually uh, different uh, uh, differences in health uh, services providing or creating an inequities in the country and what could be the possible strategic solution. So to start with, uh, we'll highlight some of the important features of, uh, of the country, especially from the health perspective. Uh, so as far as WHO, World Health Organization, um, the one of the serious challenge for India is uh, is regarding the um, deaths uh, related to non-communicable disease, what we call NCD. So uh, the NCD account for 60% uh, of all deaths in India. Uh, almost 5.8 million Indians die of uh, from these uh, non-communicable diseases or NCD, which includes diabetes, uh, stroke, uh, lung diseases, cancer, heart diseases, etc. So uh, there are certain other numbers we have put in the slide. For example, uh, you know, almost 1.7 million Indians die as a result of heart disease. India's uh, diabetes uh, issue is uh, globally being discussed. Large number of Indians are suffering, and sometimes we call it diabetes capital of the world. Uh, in India, 3.2 uh, crore people fall below the national poverty line in single year because uh, they find difficulties in paying the healthcare expenditures, especially out-of-pocket expenditures. So India is having uh, a major missions, uh, national rural health, health mission, and national urban health missions, which finally got merged into a national health mission. And, uh, and through that, we are trying to address some of the, uh, the aspects. Uh, according to PricewaterhouseCooper, 18.9 crore people in the nation will be older than 60 by 2025. So, though we are talking about demographic dividend, but we need to understand that we have a large population and our life expectancy have increased. So, increasingly, the country will have a large number of senior citizens. And as a result of that, um, if we do not have an, uh, better healthcare systems, uh, the cost to the economy will be very, very high. And there are some several other studies which actually paint a, a kind of a challenging situation for India. So here we are talking about some of the major uh, or most popular health indicators. So one is life expectancy at birth. Second is infant mortality rate. Uh, third is fertility rate. And then the crude death rate and maternal mortality. So the life expectancy at birth is a very, very uh, crude measure. Um, so it's basically trying to understand uh, what is the probability of a newborn to live, how many years the person or the baby can live. So for India in 2014, it was 67.9, and in 2018, it is 69.1 years. Still, it is lower than the world average, slightly lower than world average. Uh, in terms of infant death, which is basically per thousand life births, uh, India made a significant progress. So um, right now, nearly 27 deaths um, per thousand life births in 2020, which dropped significantly. We'll discuss this data more in details in uh, in, uh, in next slides or some of the slides in this presentation. So other thing is about the total fertility rate, which is uh, basically we are talking about possible population growth. And we can see here that total fertility rate has gone down substantially. And in 2020, it is 2.24, where it was 5.9 in 
in 1950. So our population growth has really slowed down, but we have a large base. So with a large base with a small population growth, every year we, we are adding a large number of the population in, in this country. Apart from that, there's an annual crude rate, death rate, and also maternal mortality rate, or MMR, uh, which is also um, been used as a major, uh, as a major uh, health indicators to understand the progress. So uh, what we try to do in this chapter, uh, we are having health indicators. Uh, we are also having government spending. So with the spending, what is the change in the health indicators that we try to understand? So th this is the diagram, which gives us an idea over the period how um, these indicators have changed. So you can see that life expectancy has increased, infant mortality rate has gone down substantially, as you can see, from, from 2000 to 2020, it is a real success for India's um, you know, health uh, sector. Then you can find out total fertility rate is slowing down, maternal mortality rate also slowing down. Now let's come to the public expenditure. Now, uh, in case uh, of national health account, um, 2001 and 2002, uh, around 4.6% of the GDP was actually spent. According to World Development Indicators, India's health spending uh, was around 3.9%, with public spending making up to 1.2% of GDP. So rest of the uh, things are being basically borne by the individuals. So although total health spending in China was 5.1%, so in, in case of India, it was 3.9%. So uh, the China's public spending is 2.8%, whereas India's public spending is 1.2%. So India is actually spending much less on health issues. Here are some more data, which says around $59 per person in 2011 was India's uh, spending on health whereas it was $8,608 in US, USA. So there are a few other indicators from the expenditures point of view. One is total health expenditure, second was government health expenditure, and third, third one in current health expenditure. So if you read these three bullets, you will get an idea that India's current health expenditures are significantly borne by the individuals. So for example, if you look at the last point, almost 61% of the current health um, expenditures, which includes the insurance expenditures, are actually borne by the household. So out-of-pocket expenditure um, is a serious concern for India's health expenditure overall. So how is our health system? Our health system is divided into three parts. So primary health system, secondary health systems, and tertiary health system. So primary healthcare system is basically managed by panchayat, local bodies, uh, NGOs, and a lot of voluntary organizations. And primary care includes basically preventive care, um, uh, primary health uh, um, issues being handled, like family planning, um, then uh, spending on general outpatient curative care. These are our basic primary health care issues. So once uh, the patient is uh, uh, not recovering or seems to be critical, then basically patients are sent to, from the primary care center to a secondary care center, which could be a district hospital or maybe a bigger hospitals and subdivisions. So uh, it includes the secondary care, includes the general inpatient curative care at hospitals, and, and, and tertiary care are more critical where actually uh, major surgery is required, which are generally at the state capital uh, or in the bigger cities. So, uh, Pradhan Mantri Swastha Suraksha Jarena, which was announced in 2003, or launched in 2006, was having these two main goals. One is to make this accessibility and affordability of the healthcare. So, accessibility and health and affordability are very important. First, first of all, poor people need to have an access, and then when the cost goes up, there should be an affordability. Next one, actually India at that point I understood that we are not having sufficient number of healthcare professionals. So a major focus was on the medical education. And when you say medical education, it's not just the medical education, but many other, uh, uh, other um, educations like paramedical and uh, other services which are required 
to develop the India's health ecosystem. So National Health Mission is divided into two parts. One is National Rural Health Mission and National Urban Health Missions. Now they have been merged. So uh, apart from that, um, th uh, there are other, um, other missions also. The main target of this uh, National Rural Health Mission and Urban Health Mission is basically to strengthen the health uh, systems in rural and urban India. It also focuses on reproductive, uh, uh, maternal, neonatal, child care and adolescent uh, health issues. So, uh, in, it was launched in 2005, the National Rural Health Mission, and uh, it was brought under the, the National Health Missions and during the 12 5 year plan. Uh, on the other hand, in urban residents are having better access to, uh, to, uh, to private hospitals. In rural India, it is not the case. So, more focus on the rural health missions in terms of public uh, expenditure. Uh, but in, in urban area, actually, the creating the ecosystems are becoming very, very important apart from uh, investing in, in the public health system. So, uh, one of the unique things, they especially started from the public-private um, uh, partnerships in different states. So, one of the most important here is how to bring uh, the public and private investment together. So, there are several examples. As you know, the health systems um, is both uh, driven by the central government as well as the state and local government. So you all of us have realized these things during the time of COVID where different states are having different directives and the central government was also having a directive. So health is an issue where both state governments and central government are involved. So many of the state governments such as Karnataka, uh, Gujarat, Andhra, uh, you know, they brought out interesting um, uh, you know, public-private partnerships in the healthcare system. So, a lot of studies are actually going on in this area to understand how India's healthcare systems are actually evolving or trying to become modern, bringing more public, uh, bringing more private investment in the system. So, if you look at uh, to the health financing, as I just mentioned, one of the, the most uh, you know, concern is that Almost 53% of India's health expenditures are by the household only. So, uh, it is one of the largest uh, in the world. But at the same time, if you look at the central government expenditures are 11%, state government expenditures are around 14%, and then there are local government, private sectors, and others, NGOs, investments. So, uh, so the major concern is actually the large spending by uh, and ho households which we call out-of-pocket expenditure. So healthcare infrastructure, also we find a significant gap. So we have uh, sub-centers, PHAs, PHCs, and CHCs. So, so we can find out the shortfalls in terms of percentages, 24, 29, and 38%. So significant gap is there in terms of the infrastructure. Here, if we look at the government and private hospitals, so, so in rural India, actually, uh, the government hospitals are more, private hospitals are less, and in urban area, it is the opposite. Health insurance is also a very, very important aspect because um, not all the time, actually, the government can come forward. So health insurance systems need to be developed. Um, it was there in urban India, but we require a more, more major focus on the rural India, and there are large number of uh, efforts right now going on. We'll talk about this. And, and and this issue becomes very important uh, in post-COVID period. So uh, we had the, the maternity health insurance system, senior citizen health insurance system, and John Shasta Sahayog, which is the cooperation of people's health, which are there. So uh, for example, community-based health insurance, this is just an example that which is for the unorganized workers. As we had a huge amount of spending by the by the household, so out-of-pocket expenditure from the household was significantly high. So the healthcare expenditure sometimes having a huge uh, stress on the um, on the income level or, or the sustainability level of the people. So many times, what happens? People go down below the poverty line just because of additional healthcare expenditure when family members are critically ill. So this creates a, a significant amount of inequity. Um, so that's why the accessibility and affordability to the healthcare systems are actually very, very important. So the, in India, we have a uh, national family and health survey being done. So we have 
NFHS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we can find out that a significant reductions in the mortality rate happen. But uh, once we go through the NFHS 5, and we will find out uh, the single class schedule trap and other backward classes, um, they are, they are uh, mortality rate um, are significantly uh, different between the urban area and rural area. You can find out the rural area, the numbers are much higher than the urban area. So that basically tells us that the rural-urban divide in terms of health care system is still very, very prevalent. So what are the main inequities? Main, main equities. So that's basically, as I just mentioned, uh, access to the health service, affordability of the health service, availability of care, and uh, utilization of the preventive services, and finally, the health expenditure overall burden. So this basically creates uh, uh, the difference between rural and urban, difference between uh, the income levels, and that's very much prevalent in India. So average medical expenditure, so if you look at the average medical in the private hospital is 1,062 uh, uh, rupees for one visit, uh, whereas uh, in the government hospital is 331 rupees. Now, in terms of critical um, health uh, expenditure, so public health expenditure and private health uh, health hospitals expenditure, you will be able to see the huge difference. For example, for cancer treatment, in case of public hospitals, the average expenditure is 22,520, whereas in case of private hospital is close to 1 lakh, 93,305. And these differences are very much there in terms of disease-wise. So these are basically India's major concern at this moment, how and how to improve this uh, health system so that affordability, accessibility, as well as uh, you know the cost or the burden of health expenditure, especially for the poor and people actually go down, we need to look into this particular aspect. So finally, we'll come to the COVID um, uh, time. The COVID time, health was the paramount um, in terms of government's priority, uh, in terms of policy. So one of the most important things was the Ayushman Bharat, which was uh, actually being uh, you know used for testing and treatment of COVID. And then and, and this particular uh, effort has uh, attracted a lot of attentions because um, it has uh, it has brought the technology into the picture. So the digital platform has actually been developed. Um, for example, Arad uh, Gashetu has been used for a lot of data has been collected. And uh, similarly, um, government actually uh, developed a national COVID helpline. Then it brought other agencies like Indian Red Cross Society, ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Res Research. They brought together and trying to see the Indian health systems completely a new angle, which is basically how we can bring data, uh, treatment, doctors, patients together. So if we're able to bring that, so uh, Indian health systems will uh, have a completely new look uh, in coming days. So that's our, our expectation that, that the way the India is, uh, the governments are actually looking at the healthcare system. So we might see a completely different structure in next few years. That's all from for this particular uh, session. Thank you very much. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.